Hey there, in this video I am going to go over a special right triangle called the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And hopefully you can see from this diagram that we have a 30 degree angle right here, a 60 degree angle right here, and the 90 degree angle right here. Whenever you have a right triangle like this, there's a special relationship between the sides. So I'm going to show you that relationship and then we'll get to some problems. The first thing you want to identify is the shortest side of this triangle. And you can visually see it. It's right here. It's also always across from the smallest angle. The smallest angle is 30 degrees. The side across from it is right here. So that will be your shortest side. You always label that X. Then you go to the next shortest side. And that's always across from your 60 degree angle. So that's this side right here. You always label that as X times square root 3. And then the longest side is your hypotenuse. That's always across from your 90 degree angle. You always label that x times 2. Once you have your triangle labeled, it's going to make the problems we're about to do much easier. And again, for this particular triangle, you can visually see that this is my shortest side. This is my next shortest side and this would be my longest side. You can visually see that but it's not always so easy to see that when you're looking at diagrams. Now there's special names for these. Your shortest side is called the short leg. The next side over here across from your 60 degree angle is called your long leg. And then the longest side across from your 90 degree angle is called the hypotenuse. So these are notes. And you might want to write this down or take a screenshot. Let's look at some problems now. So here, here's our first question here. We have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. So the first thing I do is label my sides like I did before. This is my short side. That's going to be X. This will be my long leg, which will be X times square root 3. And then my hypotenuse is X times 2. It's always that way. Short side X. Next shortest side, which is actually called our long leg, kind of confusing, is X times square root 3. And then the hypotenuse is always X times 2. Now we can solve this problem. We have x. It's given. It says our short side's 10, so I'll just put an equal sign right here. x equals 10. Well, with that being said, now I can quickly find my long leg, this length here, because it's x times square root 3, and x is 10, right? It says right here. x is 10, so I'll put this 10 in for x right here. So x becomes 10. Bring down your time sign. Bring down your square root 3. And that is the length of the long leg. It's 10 times square root 3. It'll be written as 10 square root 3 without the time sign. And what do you think the hypotenuse is going to be? Well, the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse is x times 2. x is 10. So I'll replace this x with 10. Bring down your time sign. Bring down your 2. 10 times 2 is 20. And you're done. So the short side is 10. That was given. The long leg is 10 square root 3, and the hypotenuse is 20. Let's look at this problem here. Again, you want to label your short side, long, short leg, long leg, and hypotenuse. Why don't you go ahead and do that really quickly? Okay, let's see. Here's my short leg. That's x. My long leg is over here this time. That's always x times square root 3. And my hypotenuse is always x times 2. Now what's different about this problem here is the hypotenuse is given. And we know it's 16. And the hypotenuse is x times 2. So let's just make a quick little equation right here. Put a little equal sign here. And I'll work this out. Let's work this out off to the side. It says x times 2 equals 16 from right here. So what does x have to be? Hopefully you can see x is 8, right? 
because 8 times 2 is 16. If I replace this x with 8, or you could just solve it like any equation. The x is multiplied by 2 to undo multiplication, divide both sides by 2. The 2's drop off and x equals 8, right? Which goes with this over here. So x is 8. Now, what's the long leg going to be? Well, x is 8, right? So I replace x here with this 8 here. So replace this x with 8. Bring down your time sign. Bring down your square root 3. And that's the length of the long leg. 8, eight times square root 3 or 8 square root 3. So short leg 8. Long leg, the length here is 8 square root 3. And the hypotenuse was given that 16. And we're good to go. Let's move on to the next problem. Now I want to double check to make sure I have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Here's my 30 degree. This box means this is 90 degrees. But this angle here is not given. But we can figure out that it has to be 60. Because remember, the interior angles of a triangle always total to 180. So if I add these three up, 60 plus 90 plus 30, I get 180 degrees. So this has to be 60 degrees, even though it's not given. Now we just go through the process we went through before. We identify our short side, or the shortest side of the triangle. Hopefully you can see it's this side right here, but it's always across from the smallest angle. Here's the smallest angle, 30 degrees. If I go across, I get my shortest side. That's always x. So this is given. x equals 7. Now let's identify the long leg. Well, that's across from the 60 degree angle. Here's the 60 degree angle. The side across from it is this side. So we will label this as x times square root 3, just like before. And then the hypotenuse is this side length right here. It's always across from the 90 degree angle, and it will be the longest side in a right triangle. So my hypotenuse is always labeled as x times 2. Let me just remove these question marks. Well, we should be good to go now, right? We have the short side, that's 7, right here. So x equals 7. So let's go over here to the hypotenuse. That's x times 2. So I just replace this x with 7 because x equals 7. Put in 7 for x right here. Bring down your time sign. Bring down your 2. 7 times 2 is 14. That's my hypotenuse. And my long leg, well, that's x times square root 3. So I replace this x with 7 again from here. So put in a 7 for x. Bring down your time sign. Bring down your square root 3. And the long leg is 7 times square root 3. And that will be written as just 7 square root 3 without this time sign. Now this problem is a little more difficult, and you're going to see why, because the long leg is given. So first, let's make sure we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's see, this, this box means this is 90, this is 60. So again, this will have to be 30 degrees, because when you total these up, 30 plus 60 plus 90 has to total 180, and it does. Let's identify our shortest side. Hopefully you can see it's this side right here across from our sh smallest angle. So our short side is x. And let's identify next our long leg, which is across from the 60 degree angle. So that would have to be this side right here. And that's always labeled as x times square root 3. And then the hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle, which is always across from the 90 degree angle. So this is always labeled x times 2. I'm just going to cross out these uh, question marks here. Now, let's go ahead and finish this up. We're given the long leg here, which is labeled by x times square root 3. And the long leg is 15, so I'm going to put an equal sign right here. And I'm going to solve this equation. So we have x times square root 3 equals 15 from right here. 
To solve this for x, well, we just undo multiplication. So the x is multiplied by the square root of 3. To undo multiplication by square root of 3, we divide both sides by square root of 3 on the left side. And then whatever I do to the left side, I do to the right side. These square root 3's drop off, and we're left with x equals 15 over the square root of 3. Now that's really the length of the short side we've solved for x, but you can't have a square root in the denominator, so you need to rationalize this. In other words, you need to get rid of this square root on the bottom. So to do that, you just multiply by whatever you have in the bottom. So you should see in the bottom we have the square root of 3. So to rationalize this, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3, like this. Now let's say it said square root of 2 in the bottom, then you multiply the, um, by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. If it said square root of 7 in the bottom, you multiply by the square root of 7 over the square root of 7. The reason this works is if you think about it, the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3 is 1. And when you multiply by 1, it doesn't change anything. So how do I multiply this out? Well, it's, it's a fraction, so I'm just going to take the top times the top. So 15 times square root of 3 is 15 square root 3. And then the bottom times the bottom. Well, that's square root of 3 times square root of 3. Do you remember how to do that? I'll write that down here. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is the same as square root of 3 times 3. You can just put both of these under one big square root. And the square root of 3 times 3 is the same as square root of 9. And the square root of 9 means what number multiplied by itself gives me 9. Well, that's 3. So when I take the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, I get 3. And look at the square root went away in the bottom. And now I can just do this one step further. If you look at this whole thing here, I can divide 3 into 15 right here. What's 15 divided by 3? Hopefully you know that's 5. And then I just bring down this square root 3. So that's really what I'm looking for here. Let me kind of clean this stuff up here so it's not in the way. And just to say this one more time, what I did here is I just went 15 divided by 3 right here is 5, and I brought down my square root 3. And remember, we're solving for x. So that's what x equals. So my short side here is 5 square root 3. And now I just need to find my hypotenuse. Well, it says to take x times 2. x is 5 square root of 3. So I'll replace this x with 5 square root of 3 right here. Bring down my time sign bring down my 2, and hopefully you can remember that all I need to do at this point in the game is to multiply the 5 and the 2. What's 5 times 2? Well, 5 times 2 is 10, and I just bring over my square root 3. So there we go. My long leg was given, that's 15. The length of my short side is 5 square root 3. And the length of the hypotenuse is 10 square root 3. Let's look at our last problem here. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's label our sides, short sides, always x. I'm just going to get rid of that question mark. The long leg is always x times square root 3. I'll write that right here. x times square root 3. And the hypotenuse is always x times 2. Again, we're given our long leg, which is labeled as x times 3, but it's given. It's 5 square root 3. So I'm going to put an equal sign here. So I have this equation now. Let's work this out. We have x times square root 3 equals 5 square root 3, right, from right here. The x is multiplied by square root 3. Uh, before I say that, we're solving this equation now. So the x is multiplied by square root 3. To undo multiplication by square root 3, I divide both sides by square root 3. These drop off. Square root 3 divided by square root 3 drops off. I bring down my x. 
I have a square root 3 on the top, square root 3 on the bottom. These drop off too. That's nice. And I'm just left with 5. So x equals 5. So the length of the short side is 5. And what would the length of the hypotenuse be? Well, it's x times 2. x is 5. Replace this x with 5. Bring down your time sign, bring down your 2, and 5 times 2 is 10. And I'm done. So my short, the length of my short side is 5, the length of my hypotenuse is 10, and the length of my long leg, which was given, was 5 square root 3.